Ryan, are you there? Uh, I'm here. I'm here. Guess what today is? It's uh, it's recruiting day and the the opening opening. No 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 no. It's game day. All right. <laughs> <laughs> We're acting like this is the last check in. This is not. We already got the last check in video out, man. But guess what? It's game day. All right, Northeastern. We are in the hat. House, okay <laughs> hey man i want to shout out to you you did absolutely amazing yesterday without me i want to apologize to everybody and you for missing that episode i hate to miss any of them uh sometimes life happens man but i appreciate you coming on the pod and covering that you did an excellent job covering that injury report um and you know things i think things are going to go absolutely okay without do charm in some of these games now i'm not saying that She's just perfectly, it's the team would be perfectly fine with her sitting on the bench, Ryan. But you absolutely hit it on the mark. A lot of great comments out of that Ducharme uh, uh, injury update report and the video. So, again, thank you for uh, doing that. A job well done. And then thanks uh, again, as always, for everyone uh, coming through on that video. <clears throat> as we sit here, we find ourselves, Ryan, on November the 10th, game day, you know, game number one. Uh, Ryan, but I know you have some more stuff to tell me about that's not specifically about game day today, although I want to talk about this matchup so bad for a second time. Um, we'll wait and come back on tonight. I mean, how often do we <laughs> – we're some lucky boys here, huh? Lucky <laughs> boys get to come on the podcast at 1.30 in the evening, and then I'll see you right back here at 7 – or, excuse me, right around 9 o'clock. So I don't think a lot of people have it made better than than – than I do right now, only because I get to see Ryan not one time, but two times today. No, that's that's too many, too too many times for me. But <laughs> no, I mean we double uploading day, very very exciting stuff. Like I was saying uh, last night, so much news all at one time. We're trying to get everything out, keep you guys up to date. But it, it's it's going to be very very exciting now. Obviously, oh, like you yeah. said, game day mm -hmm. tonight. And uh, we got another one Monday versus Texas. So many games coming up. So many last check-in videos. So, uh, you know, don't be surprised if you guys do see two uploads on the same day. Uh, but, yeah, there's definitely going to be a lot more videos coming within, you know, the, the next couple of months for sure. So it's you definitely going to be You even told me up. a message to our subs. You're like, Phil, make sure you mention to all our subs and the, and the diehard fans, especially on this pod, you're like, maybe they'll have to skip a bubble bath for a night. <laughs> or maybe they'll have maybe they'll have to skip that glass of wine or skip smoking that cigar for one night and just come on the pod and talk Yukon Huskies <laughs> women's basketball. Or, or better yet, just do both at the same time. <laughs> the same time. <laughs> that solves both problems. Well, I'm sure they, they don't want to light that, that fancy cigar up yet no. until they're holding another trophy in the air, right? That's and we all know right. what That's that right. means. Um, so, all right. So without further ado, we'll get into the, this topic of this video because we're so hyped up. It's hard to, to talk about the future, um, but we are. We're covering the four uh, big recruits with the latest um, signing yesterday. And we have Ashlyn Shade. We have KK Arnold. We have Cadence Samuels. And then we have. Jonna L. Alfie. Jenna Alfalfa. <laughs> Al Jenna Alfalfi, you have to help me out with this, Ryan. Jenna Alfalfi, it's close. You're, you're Jenna Alfalfi, I'm close. I know Huskies fans are going to get on me about this all year, <laughs> but maybe eventually when she arrives and unpacks her bags in stores, maybe then I'll learn how to say her name. Yeah, John. I'm just L. kidding. Alfie There's no disrespect from... towards her. I'm just kidding. <laughs> By the way, don't don't take offense to that, Ryan. All right. Yeah, I mean, very, very exciting player, though. 6'4 center from Egypt, Jana El Alfie. Uh, it's a surprise because I, I wasn't really expecting UConn to pick up any more players for the class of 2023, but they yeah. got four of them coming for next year, which is very exciting. 6'2 mm -hmm. wing, Cadence Samuels, 5'10 guard, Ashlyn Shade, and 5'9 guard, KK Arnold. So two guards and a wing player and a center. So covering all four positions there or all three positions, but 
Uh, it, it's going to be interesting for me. I, I think the most interesting part is just all four of these players coming and being able to fit in with with all the rest of their teammates. Um, yeah. Obviously, with with UConn, they're going to lose Dorka Juhas, uh for the next season, and obviously Lou Lopez will will go away as well. So. Uh, I mean, hopefully El Alfie and as well as uh, Caden Samuels will maybe be able to fill their spots and provide more depth. Of course, we have Ayana Patterson and hopefully Ice Brady will be able to come back for next season as well. So I think UConn's definitely in a good position, especially their guards with Paige Becker is coming back as well next season and adding two more new recruits for the class of 2023 next season. They're, they're going to be pretty stacked, especially at the guard position. And I, I think they're just going to be uh, fine at the forward position as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, again, instead of us just covering uh, just uh, Jaina L. Alfa, L. Alfie, <laughs> uh, excuse me, instead of us just covering um, her on this specific video, we figure we cover all four 2023 recruits only because today is game day, you know. Uh, and again, there, we can't talk about the UConn Huskies enough, so we figured we would include the newest, uh, the newest recruit along with her fellow three classmates, right? Um, so again, it was, and I'll, I'll tell you the headline here. Again, shout out to um, the uh, UConn, the UConn blog, uh, the Huskies made a surprise addition on signing day by landing the six foot four forward. Um, and you know, the first couple words there in that headline, Ryan, the Huskies made a surprise addition because tell me yesterday we were uh, texting each other back and forth, you know, all the time about, right. About Huskies basketball. And, and uh, any, anyway, we were discussing about uh, the pages that we were receiving, the notifications on our phone from National Signing Day. And you're like, well, Phil, you're like, well, I don't think that the Huskies will really sign anybody else. I mean, they have three big names in this class, but here they are. The Huskies made a surprise addition on signing day. So, Ryan, again, you did not expect this. Tell me. Was it Gino that saw something that maybe he did? I wouldn't say that he didn't like, but what what was I mean, just in your opinion, the one key factor uh, that this coaching staff uh, just or is it just depth? Maybe it's just depth on the roster. But in your opinion, why? You know why? Because they already had three great, amazing players in Ashlyn Shade, KK Arnold that we had on here. Shout out to KK. And then Caden Samuel. So why? Why a fourth one? I, I think it's I think probably the main reason is because of depth. Of course, like I mentioned, losing Dorka Yuhas, uh, UConn's still gonna have Ayana Patterson, Ice Brady, but they're only gonna be in their second year. So uh, I think with the addition of El Alfie and, and of course Caden Samuels as well with the wing and forward players. Uh, mm -hmm. It just adds a lot more depth, and a six-four player is very, very exciting to to for her to be able to, to come oh, yeah, to height, UConn. Yeah. I, I'm I'm sure there's going to be a little bit of adjustment from her coming from Egypt to yeah. Connecticut. So I think it'll it'll be a good next year. Will be a good uh, development year for both of these players and, and for the guards as well for Shade and, and Arnold. But I think for for all those players to be able to develop for one year, learn from Nika Mule and Paige Beckers, uh, and learn from uh, Aaliyah Edwards and uh, Ayana Patterson as well. So I think if all four of those players get developed, they stay healthy, and I think UConn's going to be pretty stacked for next season and for years to come because we we all know Gino and that coaching staff is constantly looking for players for the class of 2023 and for years and years to come down the line. So I think UConn's going to be in pretty good shape in terms of depth for next season. So we get to the hard part before comments, and then we'll take a quick break and then right back on here tonight, busy time of the year. Uh, out of Cadence Samuels, okay? Caden Samuels, Ashlyn Shade, right? Ashlyn Shade. Caden um, Samuels, Ashlyn Shade, not Ayanna Patterson. No, 
She is this year. Um, who do we have? And then with the new key addition, Ryan, of uh, yesterday, along with K.K. Arnold is yeah. the other one. All right. So along with uh, Jaina L. Alfie. All right. I might have got it right that time. Which one? It Very tough. This is just for fun. Let's just say for now. You know, we love to predict. Which one has the biggest impact? You know, I'm actually very high on Ashlyn Shade. You know, I saw a lot of her highlights coming out of high school, or she actually is still in high school. Um, but again, which one, man? That's tough because now all of a sudden you had to guess between three. It doesn't seem like that many players, but a fourth key addition, you know, a fourth key addition to this to this powerful offense. And, and developing into one of the most dominant defenses in basketball, college basketball, which player, man, just out of the class of 23, which one has the biggest impact on this team? It's so tough to say because I, I love to predict these things. Yeah, but of it's course, so K.K. Tough. Arnold, I can't leave out K.K. Caden Samuels, I admit, I did not hear I go talking over you already <laughs> because, it's yeah, you're right. I mean, you don't want to doubt Caden Samuels. I really didn't see her play a lot. The new um, uh, Egyptian forward from yesterday, I really didn't get to see her play a whole lot yet, right? So, K.K. Arnold, Ashlyn Shade, I'm familiar with, but again, it seems like when you, when you, when you do not make yourself familiar with, with the players, uh, with the newest signings, then those are the ones that really surprise you. Yeah, and predicting pretty much a year ahead like this with, with all four players still – being in high school and not not yet in stores uh it's so hard to, to say what their impact is gonna be but uh i i believe I, i'm do, do I you want I, me to slow down on you a little bit am i challenging you too much it, it is it is a challenge <laughs> but you know you know what i yeah. i'm gonna go with jonna l alfie as being uh, an impact player I, I just think because of her size and we talked about that a lot how UConn really hasn't had the size over the past couple of years and yeah. losing ice Brady this year is definitely going to make a mark, but uh, I think they're, they're still good for this year, but for the years to come, if L Alfie can develop uh, learning from Aaliyah Edwards and Patterson mm -hmm. ice Brady, uh, hopefully from Amari DeBerry and, and Albert Griffin as well. But I, I think she can develop into a really, really nice player down low, especially uh, in the painted area. Yeah, uh, she she can she can be a beast, I, I think, down there in the paint. But we'll just have to see four very exciting players, though. Kenneth Robinson says, great work going solo. Awesome job. Always bringing some great information to us UConn fans. Hey, that's all Ryan on that. All right. That's all Ryan on that. Ryan, this is from the last video when you went solo um, and Kenneth Robinson is high on your work. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate it. Appreciate it as always. And uh, yeah, like I said, I, I didn't bore you guys a lot with that video last night. Tried my best, but uh, yeah, thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, the disruptive one. This is twice that Caroline has had strange injuries that UConn was not forthcoming about. The head injury last season that they refused to call a concussion I agree with Paul. I think Carolina is going to miss a lot of time this season, and she is going to miss practices and games and will maybe uh, be less effective as a result even when she does play. Yeah, that's a question. I was thinking about that last night um, by myself, Ryan, when I got back home um, late, late last night, and I thought to myself, you know, this is maybe a, a podcast, maybe a show for later this season when we see these players, how they start to react in real-time games. Um, it's, either, it's either Caroline, I feel like she's either going to do really well in the playing time that she gets or not so good. Um, and, you know, just a very quick comment. I'll let you go. I know it's your time to talk. Uh, think about it really quickly, Ryan. Sports teamwork. I get it. This is a team sport. Think about this, though. You have – you call them it's, – it's, it's weird. You call them your friends, your classmates, your teammates. I get it. At the same time, aren't they kind of, quote, unquote, like enemies? Meaning there's always someone behind your back fighting for that position to make a roster spot. 
Yeah, that that's very true. And with UConn bringing in uh, four new recruits for next season and always bringing in the best of the best re- recruits and uh, players from the transfer portal, uh, when you're in a program like UConn, and I think that might be some of the reason why we've seen an increase in the players that transfer out for UConn, it's not for everybody. And it's very hard to compete, even though, you know, they all are teammates. They're all competing for uh, the starting job and to be able to get minutes uh, off the bench for themselves and being able to show what, what show their skills off and what they can do. But hopefully for Caroline, she's obviously, we all hope she's able to play this season in every game and obviously she's going to miss the first one tonight uh, yeah. but i mean last season we we learned that she played with with multiple injuries i think at mm-hmm. times and she did miss a couple games but hopefully she's able to stay healthy obviously we're we're not uh, you know we don't know if she'll be available for monday's game or not uh but hopefully like i said last night hopefully it's not a lingering injury and and mm-hmm. hopefully she can stay healthy for most of the season William Johnson, yes, I will be at the game tomorrow. If I see anything interesting while at the game, I'll be sure to let you guys know. Oh, that, hey, that means a lot, and that definitely puts a smile on Ryan's face. Yeah, let, let us know for sure. That, that'll that be pretty exciting. I'm sure the atmosphere down there in the Gamble Pavilion will be electric tonight for that Phil first. And, Phil and Rive will be there in spirit. Yeah, be, <laughs> yeah, we'll be there watching on the screens, but yeah. we'll, we'll be there in spirit for sure cheering yeah. on the UConn Huskies. But I'm sure the atmosphere is going to be electric. Can't wait to watch it. And, uh, yeah, let, it, let us know if anything interesting happens. But, but we'll be watching for sure. Paul Samora, Paul Samora goes, hope I'm wrong, but in my opinion, Carolina is going to see limited action this season. If that neck has not loosened up by now, more than likely, it's more serious than simply a stiff neck. If her practices are limited or not at all, then she is going to need time to get her legs under her and get in the game, or excuse me, get in game shape. UConn doesn't play 10 tune-up games prior to league play like most teams so that doesn't help neck issues are nothing to fool around with she needs to be 100 percent. you know i brought that point up um i actually didn't know that so thanks paul for letting us know ryan it looks like uh these top uh 25 schools or the the uh top schools in this in this league um in this association rather it looks like the smaller schools do get some more uh, tune-up uh, opportunities rather than UConn because he goes, UConn doesn't play 10 tune-up games prior to the league play like most teams. So that's interesting. May, may, wait, maybe we should ask everybody what they think about that. Ryan, in, in years to come, more tune-up games or keep it at one? Yeah, there's definitely two sides of the argument for that. I mean, you you can, you know, there's going to be a lot of people that say they, they want to see more scrimmage games and there's going to be people that say they, they don't want to see more. But uh, either way, I mean, it, it does get the players ready for the opening night, of course, when the, the regular season starts and the games do count towards the record. But uh, yeah, I mean, hopefully for, for Carolina, it's not, she's not dealing with the next stiffness for, uh, a couple more months or certainly not the whole season but it, it is interesting about the exhibition games that, that more more teams or uh, teams play more than other teams but yeah. uh, I, I I don't personally really like to see a lot of exhibition games I mean especially for UConn I don't really think they need they need to be warmed up a lot but it is an interesting topic for sure yeah for sure uh, let's go and get a couple more comments in here and then we will uh, stop right there because, again, Ryan, we're getting close to tip-off, all right? Uh, BL Knicks, is this related to last year's injury, parentheses, concussion, end of parentheses, or something new? I, I mean, it, it's really hard to say, but I, I personally wouldn't say that it's connected. Uh, I believe she did have the hip injury last season and, of course, the concussion or or the head injury that, that wasn't ruled a concussion. Uh, hopefully it's not. I, I I don't really know, to be honest. I mean, it's it's so hard to tell, but uh, I think we're going to learn a lot more heading heading, uh, you know, heading up to that game on Monday versus Texas. But 
Uh, it, it's just so hard to say. I mean, with, with you know, the, the questions keep on coming and it becomes more interesting every time a player is dealing with an injury or gets hurt with UConn already losing two players for the season. And, you know, the bill of health for UConn certainly wasn't the best for last season. So uh, it's it's going to be interesting to see what, what their health is, uh, you know, how healthy they can stay for this season. But it's uh, it's a little concerning with, with all these injuries, seeing all of them happen so, so quickly, it almost seems like. Um, how about let's go with Arthur. Arthur says, dude, dump the hat. <laughs> yeah, I, <love> <laughs> I, I, I can think tell you now, probably... I know I can tell you now, Ryan, these hats are here to stay because I can't tell you how many times Ryan has told me, Phil, these hats feel amazing. <laughs> yeah, uh, he's probably the same one that, that commented before about the hats. But uh, <laughs> like I said before, I'm personally not a hat person. You'll you'll never see me in a hat besides yeah. this podcast. But well, uh, I, let's mention how bad I don't know about you, how bad I look with a hat let alone without one so <laughs> i definitely needed to cover up some of that ugliness you know what i mean <laughs> yeah i mean I, i'm gonna look bad regardless with or without a hat so it, it doesn't really matter to me hey but, man look it's uh, all fun on here right yeah. it's all fun uh, of course until we get to game recaps and last check-ins right it but you know we like to have fun when we can and then dan waymont dan waymont goes the last comment of the day, Ryan, two words. That's it, two words. And again, we like to have fun when we can. What hell? <laughs> <laughs> what? Okay, so maybe he just he just cannot live with himself uh, with this terrible news. Do charm. Now it's not, hey, Ryan, it's not a season ending, a season, excuse me, season ending injury, God forbid. I mean, we already had two of those. Um, no more, right? No more. This is just ruled out, Ducharme ruled out versus Northeastern. But your buddy Dan says, what hell? <laughs> well, <laughs> well, we we can certainly hope it's not a season-ending injury, and certainly we can hope that it's not one that lasts until the season is over. But uh, it's certainly frustrating, I'm sure. I'm sure he's frustrated just like all the rest of us are that keep seeing – uh, it seems like every week we see a new injury on the injury uh, on the injury report. So hopefully, like I said, the, the bill of health for UConn this season stays relatively clean. But we'll just have to see. It's hard to stay completely healthy, but uh, it, it is definitely getting a little concerning now. And it'll definitely be a lot more concerning if Caroline Ducharme is out for the game Monday. Any last words before the uh, first game of the regular season i know we had the last check-in so again we don't want to get too much into detail but uh we can't talk about it enough i know you're excited uh and i'm just excited as you we all know that you can't wait and we can't wait any last words i i just think if you know for uconn tonight as long as they play their game it's going to be really exciting i'm sure there's going to be some nerves and especially with them being in front of their home crowd, the energy, the excitement levels, uh, they might come out a little slow. Uh, it's hard to tell, but as long as they play their game, they play like they did in that exhibition game. I'm sure they'll be fine. Have a good time and uh, have fun to everybody that, that might be going to the game tonight. And uh, we'll be back on here, like you said, around nine uh, for the game recap. Ryan, the countdown is on, bud. Um, it's just about... I have two o'clock, so two, three, four, five, six, seven. We have about five hours left uh, on the dot, right? On the dot, five hours sharp, and that would do it right here. Ryan, alfalfa? <laughs> 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 Let's say no more before we get ourselves in trouble. <laughs> Phil and Rye on Listen Up.